Okay, so let's add ourselves an action that can replace all occurrences of some words that we provide in the list, such as these words, with uh, some other string that we specify. So we can add bleeps into our comments where uh, some specified words occur. And if we want to create an action and haven't done that before, we probably want to have a look at the existing actions first to see what they look like. So let's let's do that. Actions. It so turns out that actions and conditions are very similar in how they are built. Uh, actions are a little, little bit more uh, complex and I'm going to show you how in just a minute uh, or a second here let's try this one entity fetch uh, this one is uh, well fetch entity by ID very useful um, action in some uh, cases it has two parameters input values uh, type of entity and ID for the entity let's not go into details here these work just as with conditions these are sent as parameters to the function that is uh, uh, executing the action that is responsible for the action and since we have base declared here uh, this is the function name instead of this up here um, okay but it has something else that is uh, different from condition and this uh, that's this provides thing that is kind of similar to the parameter uh, but this is something that is brought back from from the function from the action function uh, and this uh, throws back, well, it br brings back uh, um, a piece of data of unknown type. I happen to know that this is some kind of entity usually, um, but it's here declared as an unknown type. Uh, I think that's altered by one of these callbacks here, but let's, let's not go into details about that. So actions uh, have parameters, may have parameters, just like uh, conditions, but they also may provide something back. And that is uh, handled in a very, well, nifty way and very uh, strict way uh, in the function that executes the action. And we're going to see how in a little while, because it's coding time. Um, we will declare a new action, uh, very similar to how we did with conditions. Let's see here function rules coding rules action info like this so we're implementing rules oh I'm gonna have to sneeze <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry oh we're implementing hook rules action info here instead of hook rules uh, conditions condition info here let's write that we do that implement hook rules action info like this and just as with the conditions here we declare conditions in a big array nested array um, that has uh, well the the uh, IDs for the actions as keys here so let's start with that actions equals big array that is empty right now and let's also return this uh, actions array yeah, right away um, we want to have an action that I call rules coding always start prefix it with your module name rules coding action and replace words something like that and this action is then described by an array in turn and what should we describe it with? Let's have a look at the existing ones. We have, I'm going to start with the easy ones, the group and the label. So I'm going to do label here in T as usual. Uh, re replace uh, all occurrences of listed words, something like that. And the group here will be rules coding. Then we'll need some input parameters. Uh, parameters. Parameter singular. That's kind of important. Uh, also described by an array. So we need parameters. We need a list of words that should be replaced. And we need a mass of text where we should replace uh, these words. So let's uh, do that. 
and let's uh, call the first parameter word list which is in turn described by an array if you've been coding for Drupal before you're not surprised by these huge nested arrays uh, they're very handy in PHP uh, but sometimes it uh, feels a bit crazy the word list has well if we want to describe this data here that we have we should have something like type and label and here we have some other things as well in, in this case but we don't need that right now so let's go back close to that one word list uh, type we should have here uh, a list of words so let's use this text and we want a label as well label and we know that labels should be wrapped in the t function so let's do that uh, words to replace something like that and we should have another parameter as well uh, the text mass to uh, do replacement in let's call it uh, text might be good I don't know array let's call it long text and it has a type which is text and it has a label which is wrapped in T and is a text to do replacements in nice well text to oh well, yeah that'll do uh, these are the parameters the input parameters but then uh, we should have uh, uh, provides here as well parameter and provides because we get something back uh, this long text with all the things replaced in it so let's do that uh, we have parameters and now provides I'm not 100% sure you really need uh, this provides thing here you could possibly just do the replacement in this uh, uh, text uh, right away uh, but let's do it this way because it's a good exercise uh, right now okay it provides something back and just as with the parameters we should call this something and let's call it uh, replaced text and that is described by an array and it has a type which is text and it has a label which is uh, replaced text or updated text is probably better updated text let's call it that um, oh we need one more thing here one more parameter we have the words to replace but we should replace them with something as well so let's do that uh, here take all of the copy oops and uh, replacement that should be just text and to replace with Whew. okay now we have declared the, the action that's kind of um, a job in itself we have label and we have group we have three parameters input parameters for the uh, action here uh, the list of words to replace the text we should replace it with and the text to do replacements in and then we get back this this is the important part when it comes to actions as as i present them right now that we get something back an updated text and let's then finally implement this by creating this function here rules coding action replace words Whew function here uh, and we get three parameters we have word list replacement and long text and we could call them whatever we like here so let's call them words first and replacement replacement and then let's call it haystack because that makes it kind of clear that we're changing things in this part here Uh, let's just 
um, give this uh, uh, comments as well. Um, action callback for replacing uh, all the occurrences of uh, certain words. Nice. Uh, okay, so let's go through this haystack and uh, every time we find one of these words, we replace it with this. I'm gonna loop through the words for each uh, words as uh, needle. I'm gonna call that needle right now. Um, oh. String replace, here it is. I wonder if there's a um, Drupal equivalent of this. Drupal string replace. No, it's not. Good. Uh, a lot of the string uh, string functions have Drupal equivalents uh, to handle UTF-8 things and, and things like that. Uh, okay, string replace. We're going to search for something. We're going to search for the needle. And uh, we're going to replace it with the replacement. And we're going to search in the haystack. There. So, uh, for each word in the list, uh, change all occurrences to the replacement word string. Uh, okay, and when we've done that, we should return something back. This is the, the, like the big thing in this uh, exercise. Uh, it provides the updated text here, and when we do that, we just we don't just return uh, the haystack in this case because um, there might be several. Uh, well, uh, rules expects an arbitrary number of things that are uh, given back from from an action. So instead of just returning one variable, we, we return an array of data, and these. Um, this array should have one entry for each variable we want to send back and the key should match the name of that variable. So updated text is expected back, so let's return updated text is the haystack that has been changed here. I wonder if the string replace, uh, if it actually returns Okay, it doesn't change the haystack. So let's update the haystack. Uh, haystack equals, there, there we go. So it goes through this, replaces, and then it's done. Whew, and there it is. Let, let's have a look and uh, make sure that this works before finishing this screencast. This was a long screencast, I'm sorry about that. I had to think a while before finding anything that an action that makes sense in this context, and I'm not 100% sure that uh, I made a good job of it, but um, yeah, that's what you get sometimes. Sorry. Let's do an action set that is temporary, and let's take a text as input, long text, long text, continue. <sighs> And here, I think we need to flush the cache in order for rules to de detect the new action here. There. Add an action. A rules coding. There it is. Replace all occurrences of listed words. Words to replace. Let's change to the rules coding word list. Nice. Text to replace with bleep. And uh, do replacements in the long text that we get as input. Uh, we get the updated text back, that's nice, save, and then I would like to just uh, show this updated text. So let's show a message on the site, updated text, there we are, save. Okay, let's see if this works then. Uh, execute, this beta action uh, should better work. 
this bleep action should better work. Good. Uh, seems to work. Nice. And that's how you make an action. Uh, the important thing is that actions can provide things back. Provides. And if they do, you have to uh, return an array. Well, you can return uh, an array with the keys here uh, pointing to the values that the corresponding variables should have. Okay, see you!